Hi, sixth graders. Um, so today we're going to continue working on proportions, and today we're going to be working on word problems and what it means to solve a proportion um, and using real-world situations. So the title of this is Using Proportions to Solve Problems. Um, so first, I want us to look at just remembering what a proportion is. And if you'll remember from a couple of notes pages ago, a proportion, yeah, proportion tables and graphs. So remember, a proportion is what we would say if two things are equal to each other when you cross multiply. So remember when we were checking for proportions in tables, we used the butterfly method to make sure that they were equal across from each other. So proportions are useful when we're dealing with two sets of numbers that are equivalent. So I just want us to work through a couple of these first. If I told you that we had one half and as a fraction, and I wanted to know what that was equal to um, some, so many eighths. So there's some number missing up here, but it's going to be equivalent to one half. Um, so in math, when we don't know something, we use an X. And so if I think about this as a proportion, what I can do in order to find that missing number, and some of you may be able to look at that and say, oh, okay, I know that this many eighths is the same thing as one half, but um, you can check your answer and you can use proportions, this butterfly method, to make sure you're right. So what I'm going to do is if I see something set up like this, I'm going to use my butterfly method since it's a proportion. And I'm going to make sure that these things are equivalent to one another. Well, right now, if I were to multiply um, using the butterfly method 2 times x, I can't, there's nothing to multiply there. It's a number and a variable. So the way I'm going to write that is 2 times x ends up being 2x. I'm going to write it right below there. So it's almost like butterfly method, you know, put your answer here. And then on this side, we've got 1 times 8. So again, I'm multiplying using the butterfly method. 1 times 8 is 8. So I'm going to put my answer right below there. 1 times 8 is 8. Now, if this is a proportion, if these things are going to be equal to one another, then they're, the butterfly method, this cross multiplying, should be equal. So I'm going to put an equal sign in between there. Now, this is an equation that we know how to solve. This is a one-step equation. What type of equation is this? It's a multiplication equation. And it's multiplying by 2. So in order to find out what my missing number is, all I have to do now is I'm going to draw my line down the center. I'm going to divide by 2 since it's multiplication here. The 2 and the divide by 2 are going to cancel. What you do to one side, we're going to do to the other. And so on this side, I'm left with x is equal to 2 divided by 8 is, excuse me, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And so that makes it really easy to find that missing number. So here's what that means. That means up here that 1 half is the same thing as 4 eighths. Well, yeah, 1 is half of 2 and 4 is half of 8. So my missing number here was 4. Now, this is going to come in really handy a little bit later um, when we're setting up word problems. So let's just try another one of these. Okay, so let's try it. What if I said, okay, I've got 5 fifteenths, and that's going to be equal to 7 somethings. Um, and again, this is a proportion because we can cross multiple, we can use our butterfly method here. It's just not in a chart. It's written as a fraction. But when I see that two fractions are equal to one another, I can use the butterfly method to, again, I'm going to circle the things that are across from each other, things that are opposite, making a butterfly. And then I'm going to actually multiply. Now, you can use your calculator on this, and I would very much um, suggest doing that. So I've got my Desmos calculator here. And so we're going to multiply first, and it doesn't matter which way you go first, but um, we're going to multiply. Let's do 15 times 7. So in your Desmos calculator, we're going to type in 15 times 7. And that gives us 105. And so I'm going to write that down. So 7 times 15 was 105. And that's going to be equal to what I get on this side. Well, this is just 5 times x. And so there's nothing here to actually multiply. I'm just going to write it as 5 times x because it's a number and a variable. This is a one-step equation. We've solved these before. Draw your line down the center. It's always going to be multiplication. So I'm always going to use division in order to solve what you do to one side, do to the other. 5s cancel out. x is left on this side. And we've got 105 divided by 5, which again, I can use my Desmos calculator for. And so I'm going to go to a new line. I'm going to do 105 divided by 5, and that gives me 21. And so my missing number here is 21. 
And so that's how we use the butterfly method um, to solve for a missing number in a proportion. So I'm going to give you one to try and let's just see what happens here. Um, so if you want to copy this down and then pause the video and maybe try it yourself. So let's try um, 2.5. So we're throwing in a decimal here. No problem. Um, is the same thing as 4. And let's do um, 24. And let's do X. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a try. All right, I hope you paused the video and gave yourself a chance to make sure you can do this. So I'm gonna draw in what, again, I call the butterfly method. We're gonna make our butterfly and we're gonna multiply. So on this side, if we do this first, it, again, it doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, four times X, well, that's just four X. So you're always gonna write your coefficient, you're always gonna write your number times your variable on one of the sides. And then on this side, we actually have to do 2.5 times 24, which again, if we use our Desmos calculator, let's go back to Desmos. Um, that's going to be 24 times 2.5, which gives me 60. So 60 is going to show up here um, in the butterfly method. And then it's a one-step equation. So again, draw my line. I'm going to divide by 4 on this side, divide by 4 on this side. Mark that out. X is equal to 60 divided by 4, which if you need to, you can type it into Desmos. 60 divided by 4 gives you 15. Now, you could come up with a decimal answer here. Notice we had a decimal in our... Um, and we're going to come up with some decimal answers here in just a second when we do some word problems. But um, just, again, to remember what a proportion is, and again, we did this um, a couple of videos ago, if you can use the butterfly method and make sure that things are equal, that's what we call a proportion. And so when we're setting up proportions as far as two fractions are concerned, we can use the butterfly method to multiply, get a one-step equation, and then solve for a missing number. So... Here's how we're going to use this as far as word problems go. So go ahead and split your page. And actually, we're going to do four of these word problems. So if you want to take the rest of your page and maybe split it in half, we're going to put four examples here. So the first word problem that we're going to do is going to be Emily runs 400 meters in two minutes. How far can she run in 20 minutes? I'm just going to put me in if that's okay. All right, so make sure you have that word problem copied down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a proportion because we have two things that we're comparing here, and it's going to help us find the missing amount. The missing amount here is how far can she run? All right, so the first thing we want to do when we're looking at one of these word problems is what are the two things you're comparing? That's very important to pick out first. Well, what am I comparing here? I'm comparing meters to minutes. So I know what y'all like to do in word problems. I know that y'all like to pick out numbers and then just like go for it and try to do some math with a bunch of numbers. First thing you should be looking for are the words of the things you're comparing. So right now I know that 400 meters is related to two minutes. And so what I'm going to do down here when I'm setting up what I we call my proportion, I'm going just going to compare those two things. So I'm going to put meters over minutes. So again, find the two things you're comparing, in this case meters to minutes, and write them down as a fraction. That's going to help us line up the numbers here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a proportion. So a proportion always looks like this. It's going to be a fraction equal to a fraction. And we're going to line up the numbers that go with these units. So let's look for first meters, okay? What is a number that goes with meters? Well, the first number I see is 400, so I'm going to write it down. Now, does 400 have an amount of minutes that goes with it, in which case I'll put it below it? Well, yeah, this says Emily runs 400 meters in two minutes. So the number that I'm going to put below the 400 to go with meters and minutes is going to be two. All right, now we look for the another number. So there's going to be one more. There's always going to be three numbers. How far can she run in 20 minutes? Okay, so... Where did my minutes go, on the top or on the bottom? Minutes go on the bottom, and so I'm going to put 20 down here on the bottom. Do I know how many meters she runs in 20 minutes? No, that's what we're trying to find, so guess what we're going to put there? An X. And so then we have one of these set up, and so I'm just going to use the butterfly method to solve that. So once we get everything lined up, and again, you want to make sure that your units are lined up here and that you know meters go with meters and minutes go with minutes, 
then we're going to use our butterfly method. So I'm going to do 2 times x. That just becomes 2x is equal to 400 times 20. You can use Desmos calculator to do that. That's 8,000. So again, type that in your calculator. Then we have a one-step equation. Draw your line down the middle. We're going to divide by 2 because it's multiplying by 2. That cancels out the 2's. x is equal to 8,000 divided by 2, which gives me 4,000. And what is it we're asking? We want to make sure our final answer has units on it. So how far can she run? If I look back up at my x, my unit is going to be straight across from there. How far can she run? My unit is meters. So the answer is actually 4,000 meters. All right, I'm going to go ahead and split the page below that example. And let's try another word problem. Um, so we've got Joe buys four bunches of grapes for three dollars and seventy cents. How much will six bunches cost? All right, so go ahead and make sure you have that written down. And again, the first thing you want to do when you see a word problem is not pick out the numbers. You want to pick out what are I comparing? What are the two things that I'm comparing here? Well, here we've got bunches of grapes, which I'm just going to call grapes, compared to money. And so when I write, when I get ready to set up my problem down here, I'm going to put those things. So I'm going to put grapes. I'm comparing grapes to the amount of money they cost. So I'm just going to put a dollar sign down there on the bottom. So now I'm ready to pick out my numbers. And again, I know it's going to look like a fraction equal to a fraction. So here we go. What's the first amount of grapes that you see? Joe buys four grapes, four bunches of grapes. So put four on top, grapes go on top. And how much did they cost? $3.70. This is where it's important to read your problem carefully. Four goes with the three seventy. dollars Okay, then the question is how much will six bunches cost? Okay, is six going to go on the top or the bottom? Is six dollars or is six grapes, bunches of grapes? Well, it's six bunches. And so that's grapes. So six is going to go on the top. And then what's going to go on the bottom? We always have three numbers. The last thing is the missing amount. How much will the six cost? We do not know the cost of the six, but that's where we're going to find this out. So again, butterfly method. Break out your Desmos calculator. On this side, of course, four and X is just going to be four X. So that's always a pretty easy thing to uh, write down. And then... For the multiplication, we've got $3.70. So let me get my calculator out here. So we got $3.70 multiplied by 6. So we're multiplying it by 6 times 6. And we get 22.2. All right, so we're going to write that down. 6 times 370 is 22.2. All right, and then I'm ready to do my last step. So one step equation. I'm multiplying by 4, so I'm going to divide by 4 to get rid of it. What I do to one side, do to the other. And so in my calculator now, I'm going to type 22.2. 22.2 divided by 4. And the answer I get is 555. $5.55. $5 and that is my final answer. Um, because we're talking about cost again, right? So again, we look across from our X to get our unit, and so we want to make sure we write our dollar sign on our units there. All right. Two more examples. And so the next example, actually, let me move this so I can get the paper in here. Here we go. All right. The next example is going to require us to do some rounding. All right. Um, so in Mexico... The money is called pesos. The money is called pesos. Did you know that? It's true. It's called pesos. All right. So I have 3.30 pesos. Now, when you're talking about money in different countries, of course, there's different um, exchange rates. There's different, um, you know, so much money in America is different in um, a different country. And so let's say that 
we know that $32.50 is equal to 42.90 pesos. So I want to know how much money do I have? It's in American dollars, right? So again, okay. two things we're comparing here. What is it that we're comparing? Well, in Mexico, the money's called pesos. I have 3.30 pesos. We know that $32 in America and 50 cents is equal to pesos. So the two things we're comparing are right here. We've got dollars compared to pesos. So we're comparing American money to Mexican money, which is called pesos. All right, so when I set up my proportion, what do I know about that? Well, I know the problem tells me that 32, and we're putting American dollars on top, 32.50 is the same thing as 42.90 pesos. Pesos goes on the bottom, American dollars goes on top. All right, I have, what do I know? I have 3.30 pesos. So pesos goes on the bottom, so 3.30. Do I know how much money in America that is? That is what I'm looking for. And so that's where my X is going to go. All right, we've got a lot of weird decimals here, so hang tight. Definitely going to use Desmos on this one. This one's going to be really easy because I have 42.90X is equal to, and then I'm going to have to type these decimals in to multiply them. So we have still got my we got 32.50 times 330 <coughs> excuse me gracious all right so 32 32.50 times uh 3.30 so 3.30 all right so i get 107 oh i don't know, know if you could see that 107.25 is the answer to 32.50 times 330 so 107.25 107.25. I'm going to run out of room. All right, we're going to solve our one-step equation. Here we're dividing now by 42.90 because that's what's next to our x. So 42.90. And so I'm going to type that in, dividing by 42.90. So we've got 107.25 divided by 42.90. All right, and so we get the answer of 2.5. Now, I'm going to write that over here in the margin. Um, so our answer is x is equal to 2.5. But now, think about the unit we need to go on this. So the unit here is, um, going across from here, it's dollars. Is there such a thing as 2.5 dollars? No, we need to add, dollars always have two decimal places, and so we want to make sure that we add a zero here to get $2.50. Um, dollar, you want money to always have two um, decimals. And so just um, for the practice uh, aspect of this, we also want to make sure if we were to ever get a decimal like, I don't know, 6.593, if you were to get a decimal that looks like this and the answer was going to be money, your final units are money, we would not even write that three, right? We would just write 659. Similarly, if you got, I don't know, 7.258, and it asks you money. There's no such thing as $7.258. Um, but that 8 would round that 5 up. And so we would have to write 7.26. So just keep in mind as you're working through the practice problems, especially if you get decimals as answers for money, that money is always going to have two decimal places and we want to round it accordingly. All right. So last problem. Um, and it also is going to have to do with a little bit of money. All right. So we've got Molly bought two cabbages for a dollar eighty. How many cabbages could she buy for twenty eight dollars and eighty cents? All right, so the two things we're comparing, again, that's what you're going to be picking out. So two things you're comparing here, cabbages and dollars. So cabbage compared to dollars. All right, now I'm going to line everything up. So what do I know about cabbage and the dollars? I know that I bought two for $1.80. That's going to be my first fraction. What do I 
also know, well, I want to know how many cabbage she could buy for $28.80. Where's the $28.80 going to go? Top or bottom? Well, it's money, so $28.80 on the bottom. I'm looking for how many cabbages that would be. So, last example, always again, we're going to use the butterfly method. This way, it's going to be a $1.80x, right? X times 1.8. Always put your number in front. And then we're going to do 2 times... 2880. So 2 times 2880 in your calculator. And we get 57.6. So I'm going to write that down. 57.6. The last thing I'm going to do is divide by 180. Divided by $1.80. Um, and that's going to leave X by itself. That's going to cancel these out. So the last thing to do is 57.60 or 57.6 divided by. 1.80, 1.80, and I get the answer 32. And so 32, I'm going to write my answer up here in this blank, 32 what? What was it I was looking for? Look right across from your X, 32 cabbages. And that is your final answer. So that is how you use proportions to solve word problems. Uh, again, keep in mind this butterfly method solving a one-step equation, and also lining up your units to make sure that everything's lined up in the end. Good luck with your practice and email me if you have questions.